Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy, and I help people with their breakups. And today, I have another breakup story to share. And if you have a breakup story you'd like to share, please visit writemac.com. And I haven't read this story fully. I'm catching up on some stories from Christmas, so I apologize if this is a little bit later than I usually respond. But please, anyone out there, if you got some comments on this one, throw them down there. And if you like this story, throw me a like. Okay, let's get right into it. Was with my ex for eight years. She's 37, I'm 44. Obviously, you went to the website and read what I asked people to do. Age gives me a little good bit of an idea. That's not a bad age gap at all. Um, eight years is a long time, man. I feel for you. And during Christmas, okay, I've been there. Actually, you know, this is this is this is good that you're sending this in because this is going to take you some time. You got to get some clarity moving forward. Eight years. That's an achievement, as I say. She broke up with me Christmas 2017 via text. She went on a friendly date to get advice on our situation early in August 2016. I don't know if you mean like friendly as in guy or friendly as in woman. Um, wanted a break at Christmas 2016. So something's triggering her to want breaks at Christmas. Just saying. Something in her past was a bad time during Christmas. Because that's not that's not common for most people. Most people would wait after for after Christmas. I did the weak ass begging and left letter afterwards. Well, you know what? You're not the only one. You're you're in the relationship for eight years. Don't get down on yourself. Um, you're doing the right thing now by writing this story. And and you know, when you look back on that, a lot of people do it. So you're not a weak ass. You know, we decided to work it out. And me doing all the work trips, etc. all of the 2017. My dog died in August 2017. I'm really sorry to hear that, which I felt was my fault, which I sent, sent me into a sad state. And people out there that don't have dogs, I mean, it's like having a child. So uh, it definitely can, you know, if that was your little buddy that you always came home to, I could see that. And what happens in breakups is it's layered shit. You know, I've been doing this over a year now, over 400 stories, over 100 live coachings. And a lot of people are like, I lost my job, my dog died, and then my mom got sick. You know, like, the thing is, all the shit's separate. But what happens is, it's just kind of like, all right, let's say you were coming home and you just got hit with a ton of traffic. There's an accident in front of you and a drive that usually takes 30 minutes, took three hours. And you come home and you're just pissed. You're, you know, you have no patience. And your wife goes, hey, can you take the garbage out? You haven't taken the garbage out in two days. And you're just like, what the fuck? You know, you just go nuts because you don't have patience because you just stacked that traffic of three hours onto her asking to take the garbage out. So when you have something like this, it definitely affects your relationship, your attitude, and your patience. Took the ex to Vegas in October, and she broke up with me, as I mentioned, during Christmas saying she thought Vegas would help. Uh, not sure. Okay, maybe it would. She only paid for two tacos and an Uber while there. Well, you know, as far as paying goes, that differs in every relationship. There's no rules to that. If that's who she was when you first were with her, fine. I, I mean, is she the kind of person that usually, I mean, if you were with her for eight years, does she usually pay for half the items? That would be my question because everyone's different. Uh, went no contact in January 20. It definitely says something to, to me uh, that if you were together that long and she didn't pay for anything, that she didn't expect to pay for anything. We went at no contact in January 2017. And she contacted me a month later. We hung out till April, May. She was in the Bahamas with a new dude. Wow. Okay. I mean, I don't have a problem with that, but do you? Are you going to be able to get over the fact? I'm sure she was posting pictures with some guy too. Reached out on my birthday in November. I didn't for hers in August. Wrote a letter once saying she wanted me to fight for us, which at the time I know what it meant. I hear this statement a lot. Oh, I want him to fight for the relationship. To me, it's very Hollywood. And I don't know if that's what the woman really wants. I think they want attention. They want to be wanted. They want to be chased. But in the end, it doesn't really hold attraction. It just makes them feel good. But it doesn't create a better relationship in my mind. I mean, what are you fighting for? Fighting for an ex-girlfriend that's already been on a date in the Bahamas and you're pissed off because she only paid for two tacos. She always needed help financially and once said she could have been married to a baller by now and then said it was a bad joke. Well, all jokes are half true. Someone told me that a while ago. I joke around a lot, but it is all jokes are half true in some sense. So her and her mom lived together. 
Okay, well, if she's 37 years old and still living with her mom, um, nothing against that. I hope she gets back on her feet, but she probably is, is looking for someone that can take care of her. She met, new, she met new friends that were in bad relationships and started seeking counseling from them and started partying more. Well, that's a big thing. I'm going to actually do a video on advice and where you're getting advice. And, you know, not all advice is good advice and consider the source. When people are, and who you hang out with, you're the average of the five friends you hang out with the most. I don't care what anyone says. So if she's hanging out with a bad crowd and she's the best in the group, a lot of people go, oh, this friend changed her. If she's an adult, she's got a choice. She told me people at her job's Christmas party told her to dump me. What the f She's a, she's in her late thirties and she's taking advice advice at a Christmas party to dump you. Maybe you should consider dumping her and take control. Also, because I hadn't married her yet. Well, that can be an issue in the late thirties and you're in your early forties. She wants to get committed, but something held you back, right? She said, "I stayed at my job too long, seven years, while I was fixing my credit and cleaning up garnishment issues from losing my previous job." Well, if you have a purpose and a reason that's valid to you, then and you were actually working at a job, what's wrong with that? Previous job during the economic crisis. I own a home. Good for you. I live alone, and my income dropped, which hindered me helping her when her car broke down and other things, but I always took her to dinner, bought gifts, tried to make her happy in other ways, but she never really reciprocated. Okay, that's twice that you look at it like, well, if I do something for her financially or nice, I never got it back. Again, I've just heard this in another post. Sometimes men need the attention and loving too, the, um, the thank yous. Wow, you're a really good boyfriend, what have you. But the fact that you've mentioned this more than once, it's, it's, a, it's an issue with you that you're not appreciated. And that's big. All human beings, including men, like to be appreciated at some point. If you don't feel it, it hurts and it breeds contempt. And contempt ends relationships within, you know, it could be months of content, it could be that, and it just stacks. She once told me saying thanks is only for a big things. After I told her, she never says thanks. Well, so for some reason, thank you is important to you, and the things that you're doing for her, you don't feel appreciated once again. This is the third time you've mentioned that. I once inspired her, which she wrote about, but I do not but I do know that I stopped being that guy because the relationship was draining me because I was doing all the work and I was frustrated with work. So work and relationship should be separate. Um, if you feel like you were doing all the work and on hand and foot for her, well then, is that fair to you? Maybe it's good that you broke up with this woman. I stopped being that guy. Um, she's moved on, but I'm still reeling over the situation and can't stop going over my mistakes. Well, don't be so hard on yourself. I mean, more than once here, you've been a hard on yourself. It doesn't sound like you wanted to ever marry her. Uh, you've had some things that you've taken care of, and you felt vastly underappreciated, and you have some issues with her financials herself that she can't pitch in herself. I've never tried to make it. I've, I've never made tried to make shit work before or been this weak with a woman. Well, there's a first time for everything. I think it's mainly ego because I knew she had already monkey branched to a guy with more money. It sometimes is. And if that's the case, then check yourself and reframe the story and go, wait a minute, why am I chasing? Every time you do that, check it. Reframe, rewind, and go, wait a minute. Why do I want to be with someone that went to the Bahamas with some of the dudes taking pictures and then goes out with me to Vegas, pays for two tacos, whatever's bothering you, reframe it, you know, and ask yourself, can I do better than this? I'm not, when I say can you do better, I'm talking about a better match. I'm not talking about better looking. I'm not talking about richer. I'm not talking about, um, you know, I'm talking about a connection, a better connection. Because you guys weren't connected. And you felt like you were doing all the work. Is, this, is it because I brought my feelings back when tr trying to save the relationship? Could be. You said ego. I think it's ego. It sounds like ego to me. Um which is very common. I mean, sometimes in a situation like this, if you get the woman back and she's all into you, you might just lose attraction because you, you've, you've already beat the challenge and got your ego back. I've learned so much since the breakup about my purpose, et cetera. This is the best thing and the worst thing at the same time. It is. That's a great way to put it, bud. Um, I mean, I've been through a few breakups. I've been through a really bad one. And at the time, I thought nothing was worse. That's why I, that's that's why I've been doing this channel. I've been there. I've come out of it, and it, it's the it's 
it's the worst thing before the best thing. Um, crisis is an opportunity to look at yourself and say, what do I want to do with my life? What do, where do I want to be? I mean, you own a house, you got a job, you're all right, man, right? And you're, you know, you're, you're begging and pleading a woman that the way you've even wrote this, if you've been together eight years, you don't think that highly of her, to be quite honest. If you want to unpack this a little bit more, I'd suggest a live coaching session, being that you were together eight years. Uh, wish you all the best. And anyone else out there, please send in your story to writemag.com. And thank you for supporting the channel.